I wanted to put together a quick video on this uh, Rigol, Regal, Regal, <laughs> however you pronounce it. Uh, I think if they wanted it pronounced Regal, they would have spelled it R-E-G-A-L. But anyway, it's uh, the MSO 5000. The uh, I just recently purchased this to use in developing some. Uh, or updating, I guess I should say, uh, an embedded systems curriculum for universities. But the reason I wanted to get this uh, video out today, and by the way, if you've watched my videos, you know I don't have any connection to any manufacturers or to anyone for that matter. I'm retired. I pay full price for these uh, instruments, and uh, I don't receive any gratuities or, or anything from any uh, from anyone for doing these things. Uh, the But one of the reasons I wanted to mention this is the price of this instrument. I paid less than a thousand dollars for this and with the package I also got uh, all of the trigger, decode, and uh, plus power analysis uh, and arbitrary waveform generator functions of this instrument, which they say is a $700 value, but nonetheless, for less than $1,000. Now, I wanted to point out that uh, this, as far as I know, this promotion is going to be going on until the end of March. So I'm going to leave this video up for a while, but I'm not going to give it a number. And usually that indicates that I plan to take it down at some point in the future. At any rate, I'm not going to do a review of this, but what I will be doing in uh, a few weeks is using this to, to do, uh, basically to look at how you analyze, optimize, verify, and debug embedded systems. So, uh, enough about that for right now. One thing I would like to point out, I'm going to... This scope has a number of features, and if you get it with the arbitrary waveform generator, which right now is free, you not only get things like fast Fourier transform and decode, but you also get Bode plotting, an enormous number of math functions. I'm, I'm really amazed with that and a series of other things that are uh, that are new, including 500,000 uh, waveforms per second, or maybe it's 600,000. Anyway, it's a, it's a substantial improvement over the past, and uh, 100 megapoints of memory, which you can upgrade. The upgrade is not included in the present promotion, for uh, to 200 megapoints. So uh, enough about the uh, the MSO 5000 for right now. Let me move up here to the scope that I have been using in the past. And if you're interested in this, uh, well, it looks like it's not going to focus. Come on, you can do it. Well, I'll just read them to you. This is actually the scope that appears in my first 20 videos. Uh, my Tom Tech Test 01 through 018 and 040 through 047 are about this oscilloscope and a siglent that I'll show you in a second. This particular uh, instrument is a 1074Z, an MSO 1074Z, and that means that it has the, uh, the MSO uh, connections, and I, ha I have unplugged the cable here, I store it elsewhere, but if you're interested in the MSO capabilities, that is the logic analyzer, Look at those last two videos, that is 046 and 047, and you'll see this scope being used there to uh, analyze an analog to digital converter. Uh, 
or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's a DAC. It's been a long time. At any rate, uh, I wanted to talk briefly about that. And then uh, let me show you the other scope that those videos were, were looking at. This is a Siglent SDS 1102X. And it appears in... Uh, in also in my numbers 67 and 68. What I was uh, doing is looking at early uh, embedded systems in using this scope, which of course does not have the logic analyzer built in. One question you might ask is, why do you buy these low performance oscilloscopes? like the 70 megahertz version and this uh, 11, uh, 100 megahertz, uh, uh, not 1100, this 100 megahertz version here. And the answer is, what I am trying to do is to keep the cost down for schools that want to emphasize lab training. You do not need 300, 500 megahertz, gigahertz scopes to learn the basic principles of an oscilloscope in the lab. And it's more important, in my opinion, and I think most people agree, that you have more stations available for uh, students rather than uh, one high performance scope that never nobody ever gets to really use because the professor has it in his lab. Rather, uh, a number of lower performance scopes as long as they will do the job and then you tailor the experiments to give the learning experience necessary without requiring the extremely high performance. Now I have a 500 megahertz Regal DS4000 that I use when I need 500 megahertz. It actually goes a little above that uh, kind of performance. But uh, I do not find that for purposes of learning that you need the high performance scopes. I, I will mention though that uh, when you're working in a commercial environment on modern systems. Quite frankly, a 1 gigahertz scope is probably uh, a minimum, especially if you're using a system with, with clock speeds greater than, oh, say, 200 megahertz. Now, let me show you a few of the resources that you might want to look for uh, in anticipation of that embedded systems uh, series. One of the things that I have found useful as a supplement to the oscilloscopes that I've been talking about, when you need more channels than you can get on an oscilloscope, or for a number of other reasons I won't get into this morning, you might want to consider purchasing a digital discovery. If you use the trigger output of an oscilloscope into the digital discovery, you can time sync this with the MSO scopes that I've shown you so far. That is the, uh, the Regal, and, and maybe I'll show an, an application of this with the new Regal MSO 5000 at some point. But one of the nice things about this is you can get the display on a computer which allows you to more easily capture and analyze complicated waveforms and relationships. It has all of the decodes and other things. It's basically a digital logic analyzer. It's a little more expensive than the uh, the Chinese Sailey knockoffs and things like that, but it has considerably enhanced performance. And I have found that it keeps up very well with a 70 or 100 megahertz MSO. So I said I would talk about some resources. The One of the books that 
I have found useful ever since the <laughs> it first came out, which I'm not sure when, it's been around a while, is this book by Pease. It is troubleshooting analog circuits. And so for the analog portion of an embedded system, the uh, this has as much practical advice as you're going to find. Another book that I have found extremely useful is this one. Let me move the camera up a little bit. There we are. And this is High Speed Digital Design by Johnson and Graham. Now I'm showing you just a, a page out of the middle of the book because I loaned my copy and uh, well let's just say I decided I probably would ought to order another one and it hasn't arrived yet. I loaned it out some time ago and it's uh, never found its way back. Uh, so but this is an extremely good design book but it's an even more important, in my opinion, analysis and verification book. If you're looking for something that tells you where to look for problems in an embedded system, this is the book I would recommend if it's a digital, if it's a digital issue. Now another one that I have found useful, I'll turn this off, it probably eliminates some glare, is this book by Buchanan. Uh, it's a little bit dated. It only covers uh, early CMOS and TTL, but it also talks about power integrity, signal integrity, and those sorts of things that are very important today. Now, many of you may, may know that part of my technical career was running a research lab, a large research consortium, for some of the major uh, electronics companies, uh, companies like Hewlett-Packard and Motorola and uh, 3M, uh, Lockheed, Hughes Aircraft, uh, Digital Equipment Corporation, and so on. I think you can tell I'm a little dated because that consortium finally wound up its operations uh, almost 20 years ago. But that was sort of the, the last uh, of my uh, technical work in industry. And the thing that was the problem that we were working on, because it was a real puzzler for all of those companies, was the idea of packaging and interconnect, particularly under VLSI conditions. It, the problem hasn't gone away. In fact, it's gotten worse. But this book is one of the better ones on some of those issues. Once again, it's a little dated. I think it goes back, it's about a 2000 or so book. And then finally, this book, Introduction to Mixed Signal IC Test and Measurement, I found particularly useful. And uh, once again, it, it's, uh, it, it's a little bit dated. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of good up-to-date books in this area. So we'll be trying to fill in some of those gaps and bring some of this material up to date in the future. But for now, I just would like to point out that that MSO 5000 that you see over there is the uh, scope that I'm going to be using to develop all of this. But that's to come. For now, stay tuned. I've got some, a lot of videos to put together before I get there, but, uh, but I hope it'll turn out to be a useful series in the future. By the way, if you have any comments, suggestions, etc., go ahead and put them in the comments. I read all comments. I do not respond to all comments. I try to respond to those that, uh, that I feel or provide a kind of general interest rather than a specific. So if your question is, how do I uh, set up the XYZ mode of the Model A uh, instrument, 
I probably won't uh, respond to that. What I may do is include it in a list of things to cover in some future videos. So, uh, but I wanted to get this video out so that those that might want to take advantage of the price can do so before the uh, promotion expires. Now, uh, I will be uh, using many of the functions of this oscilloscope in those future videos, but I do not plan to do the kind of comprehensive uh, videos that I did on this scope, where I went through all of the measurement and uh, other functions, the, the decodes, the triggering, uh, <laughs> 20 videos on all the different aspects of the 1074. Uh, instead, I'm just going to be hitting some highlights with the MSO 5000. So I hope that satisfies people. I hope this, use, this uh, video is a little bit useful to you. And in the meantime, I'd hope you stay safe, stay in the lab, and have a nice day.